All right, guys. Well, welcome back to the casting booth uh, for this next map. I am joined now by Wasabi. How you doing, man? Dude, I'm fantastic. How was how was that first that first map? It was, in a word, magnificent. <laughs> I mean, how great is it not only to watch these guys play on an incredible level, but to be sitting out in an audience of a hundred of our community contributors just basking in the awesomeness of that marine play. Uh, and that was awesome from both teams. I mean, super, super, super aggressive play uh, that we saw from Sonneman. Right out of the gate in that round, they basically just came out, guns blazing, left, middle side, their zoning was perfect. They knew exactly where Titus was going and creeping them off at different little corridors and stuff like that. Um, amazing play there. Um, and you saw with Titus in that second round, they were bringing it right back to Sauna. And you know that's what they were thinking. They were just like, okay, that's it. We got to give it back to them. The big positive to this, of course, is that these teams are good enough to be able to do that. You expect them to turn it around and be able to come with just as much aggression towards the, you know, towards the Sonomen as they brought on to them. The one thing that I saw that was a bit different is there was a lack of res biting, and I don't expect to see that again from Sonomen. I think they know that that was where it came back to hurt them, and that this next time around when they play Alien here on Vale, especially on Vale, they know that they need to cut the marine economy into nothing. Yeah, and you know, one of the things that we saw in that, in that game uh, from Sonomen, you mentioned uh, the lack of biting there, but uh, also, on the other hand, with Titus, uh, they were doing really well um, keeping together and covering each other in there. There was very, very few points where there was kind of a lone Marine out there, um, and I think that really helped him. It helped him get those catches um, you know, on those lurks, which was some beautiful play. Um, so amazing job from both teams uh, in this matchup. And I think what we're gonna see uh, going forward, again, if you guys are just joining us, um, this is a best of five. So it's really the first uh, to three that wins this. So I know a lot of it, we were talking earlier and we were like, okay, uh, I wonder <laughs> if this is gonna, if any of these are gonna be a 3-0. Maybe our first match will be a 3-0. <laughs> well, that's shot out of the water. Well, I think one of the best part is, is like I'm out in the audience and I'm trying to cheer on for both teams and I'm like, you guys need to give Titus a little more umph. And they're like, oh, we want Sonneman. We're European. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, I get that, but come on, let's win. And then they all finally give praise. And I'm like, guys, realize this is the first time that we have had a non, like 3-0, 4-0 in a live final in a studio. So we're moving into whole new territory here in NS2. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Um, again, these two teams really want in it. We know that um, whoever wins this matchup will go ahead to the finals um, and they will play uh, the winner of the Snails and Godar match. Absolutely. Uh, which is going to come up here. So we are going to move on to the uh, the next map here, which is, as you can see on your screens, is going to be Vale. I really love this map. I mean, the rush to Nano is always exciting. <laughs> <laughs> Nano Grid obviously being uh, the center of the map with the two resource nodes, and obviously not only are the two resource nodes there that help your economy, but it also gives you a nice little central position uh, in the map so you can launch your attacks all over the place. Um, a another great position here uh, is system waypointing, where a lot of uh, Marines like to put their phase gate there. That it enables you to get subsector and cargo. But we are going to get this match started right away here. Sonneman versus Titus Gaming, and they are 1 1 right now. We got Sonneman as Marines starting up here in control, building that armory. And we got down in pipeline, uh, we got Titus Gaming as aliens. Looks like Titus has opted to go for an early gorge here on Vale, so it looks like tunnel play probably to Nano Grid. You got the 2 2 split with the skulls going through system waypointing and over here by topographical. And it looks like they're just going to probably play like they did the last time, trying to get those early parasites on as many of the Marines as they can. Nate, Tane, and Unseen coming in through topographical. We got Sicknick getting pushed back just a bit. Golden now down in East Junction. Right away, we got Gorgeous putting down a, go uh, <laughs> a gorge tunnel here in <laughs> Nano. I almost said a gorgeous gorge tunnel. <laughs> it is, actually. Nate, Unseen, and Tane coming through East Junction um, up against these guys. Golden being pushed back, and he it looks like he's going to try to be a little bit of backup here against Gorgeous. We do see that there is a skulk around the corner, which these guys definitely have heard, but definitely goes back into 
<coughs> east junction. I like this whip play. Versal putting the whip here in the doorway. So as they're coming through, they're getting armor chipped off by the whip. And then the whole team converging down on the Sonoman here, able to clean them up. And you can <laughs> see that they took almost no damage. Fantastic job there. Now Golden, Sicknick, and Locklear. Rentology trailing behind just a little bit, moving into Topographical. And they're going to work on that RT. Golding going to Golden going to check something out here in control. Meanwhile, over in Overlook, we got Llama and Lipa just building up that RT and moving into subsector. Yeah, two men, re, uh, you know, going around capping the res is good for the Sonoman. While this has all been happening, of course, Versal dropping a harvester down in cargo, trying to grab as much res as he can for aliens. You can even see that he's spread to C12. So he's trying to go for five res nodes as soon as possible. Rentology and uh, Golden moving down. We got uh, Sicknick coming down through Wide Junction into Cargo. Those two Marines, Lipa and Llama in Subsector, just built up that uh, RT, and they're moving into System Waypointing where a scan goes down. Titus Gaming on the north side, knowing that that's happening. These Marines look like they're going to head into Cargo. We got Tane and Nate in C12. Golden around the corner, trying to get some Parasites in on Tane. That it, Harvester is down, though. Looks like, you know, the Marines are starting to amp up their pressure on res income in general. You got Lipa and Llama making their way down to Cargo as well. So with C12 down, that takes them down to four Harvesters. And if they can get Cargo down, locking them down to three with oh. the double. But look back at Marine start. Yeah, look at here. Locklear in there, taking out the observatory, running around unseen, coming around the corner, taking a couple shots from his pistol. Golden coming back from behind, taking him out and tossing him into the corner. We see the observatory is almost down. We got Hopsu that just respawned, or I'm sorry, jumped out of the command chair. Wow, and you know, that's a little bit unfortunate. I think Golden could have finished off the observatory since all the focus was on the gorge, but you know what? Missed opportunity this time, maybe not next time, because it is pretty low. Pressure from Lipa and Llama, though, as they make their way towards the dome. And they're really just trying to retreat this infestation as much as they can. And again, cut off that res supply like they did back on Tram. Yeah, definitely. Gorgeous. And Rantology now here in C12 moving off. Uh, we got those two Marines uh, that are still here in the dome. Nope, they just got killed here by Sicknick. So those two Marines are out. I was, I was saying, I was thinking earlier with those two Marines in C12 and the two in cargo that they were going to do a, a two-prong attack uh, into the hive that early, but they got cleaned out. Nate and Tane now moving into C12 via the vent. Yeah, this is definitely a Resno that they kind of want to save at this point. With the uh, cargo going down, they need to be able to hold up this extra res because everything over three is a real big win for the alien income. Marines on the other side, though, you know, they had four extractors and the aliens have just succeeded in taking down their first uh, extractor down there in subsector. Uh, oh, no. We might see here. Llama. Oh. Jess gets out of there in subsector. That uh, golden was down to nothing. Almost black barred here in subsector against Unseen and Llama. You see the cis chain has been cut um, and restored by Titus Gaming. Still on two harvesters. Four, ex, uh, four extractors, four Sonoman. Power just going back up over in Topo. They're going to drop that RT. But, you know, we've got Lurk Harassment chipping away that armor. You know, we saw this a lot in the Tram game. The Lurks are very powerful. But what I love about Sonoman is when they start feeling the pressure, they send more people. And, you know, they're not over committing to just one side, but these three guys here bringing mines with them, mining up the vents, and they're just trying to buy enough time for themselves to start getting upgrades. As you can see, Weapons 1 is now being researched. Nice cleanup there in system waypointing by these guys. Titus now moving into Skylights. 50% there on that RT by Rantology. We got uh, Nate taking down a drifter in the top left corner of your screen. Tane and, and Lipa here up against uh, this Harvester. Here comes Sicknick. Oh, couldn't do anything there. Gets out of there just in time, and this three marine powerhouse moving through the neck and down into pipeline, going to put pressure on the main hive. I mean, I like that they're putting pressure. Signic's still going to be able to defend this pretty well. The other catch is they don't have shotguns. So this is a really risky move, I think. I think if anybody could pull it off, it's Sonoman. They're very strong marine play. But, you know, you got to be really careful. I love this play against the Harvester, though. Desist, mm -hmm. try to do some damage. If you take out that base Harvester, it's just one more they've got to worry about, especially at home. Here they come. Tane, Lipa, and Nate all moving in, trying to get Sonoman out of there. Lipa, Nate taking down Rantology and Gorgeous. Nate and Lipa still alive. Great job there. 
We got Sick Nick and Golden as the two lurks trying to get these guys out of there. Sick Nick spiking down Nate. Finally, Lipa goes down. That was a great move there by Sonoma and holding that up quite a bit. Unseen down here and Cargo taking down this Harvester. Gonna drop Titus down to two. Pressure over on the left side though by the aliens. They did get overlooked down. Uh, Skylights uh, has been repaired and that's taking Tane quite a bit of time when mm -hmm. he could be out there pressuring. Uh, so that's, that's a big win too. You know, Blind mentioned it a lot. Timing is almost everything, especially when you've got income coming in. Seen Unseen got uh, taken out there in cargo. We got two Marines, Lipa and Nate, coming in through East Junction now, moving towards C12. They may take a detour and go towards, uh, towards the, uh, the center of the map. Looks like they're going to end up taking C12, though. On the other side, uh, we got a <coughs> Marine going down to Golden. I like that these Marines are pressuring back at the neck again and coming straight back. They know that Harvester's being grown. They know this is a good time to go and pull off the infestation again. But there's one little problem with that. All of the aliens uh, that have it are now at 39 P-Res, which mm -hmm. means the fades are about to pop here at about the seven and a half minute mark. And with only weapons two and zero armor and uh, both lurks still up, that's gonna be a really tricky situation for Sonoman to stay alive in. Catalyst packs now are researching. Catalyst packs are really good, really expensive, but uh, they do pay off in the hands of uh, really, uh, really good Marines. Lipa, Nate, and Unseen again. Three Marine pressure coming in through the neck. We got Golden almost getting taken out as he was perching around the corner there. Oh no! Here comes the fades. Signic over committing oh, and goes right lurks. into the battle. Two lurks down! Wow! All of Titus Gaming is dead except Rantology right now. That is a big loss Huge. right at this time. Huge play! Both those lurks are so <laughs> vital to this, to this fade play. And now the real question is going to be, with only the one fade, the second one getting ready to evolve, I mean, man, what are the... Oh, I think this is the part where they say, thank God, there is no armor being researched or that there is, you know, there's no armor one or two at this point to add more swipes to the fade kills. So that's the one thing they've got going for them at the moment. Yeah. Well, these two fades are now out. It looks like they're meeting here in the neck, taking down Lipa and Unseen. They're moving through into C12. Locklear Rantology as the fades on the field. Titus losing their two lurks. It's pretty bad, um, you know, this early in the game before the 10 minute mark. Shotguns now are researching. Phase gates are almost done. Llama and Tane down here in cargo. Yeah, Sonoman absolutely capitalized on the pressure they were putting on the hive. They had Tane and Llama going around recapping. They got themselves up to six res nodes at the time. Then coming in here to cargo, taking the aliens down to three. You know, Versal keeps building C12, but it keeps getting chipped off before it can really produce anything for him. The Fades really need to do some damage control right now. Nice job. Clean up there in Cargo with his two Fades with a help from Golden as they move out north. Still got Unseen and Nate here in the neck again. <laughs> Pressure coming through the neck again. And here we go. They're going to meet Locklear. Wow. Whoa. He runs, he blinks into a wall of bullets and just 180s. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, as I said, if there's any Marines to be scared of without <laughs> shotguns, it is Sonoman. These guys can hone in on you and just hold a crosshair that is the size of a basketball, <laughs> you know, and just take you down. These fades doing what they can, but having to retreat with low energy. And, you know, this is this is a tricky situation, and Locklear's the only one here to defend. Locklear is definitely trying to defend. He's doing good on health up against these guys, but... Um, you know, health packs are being rained down by Hopsu right now. Nate going down. There's Rantology, his backup. Now going up against Unseat, and they take that out. Good play there by Titus Gaming. Now, one thing we've talked about over and over again, and we will continue to say it is res biting, yes. res killing. And right now, you know, it's 8-8 eight, eight at 10 and a half minutes, and the aliens have really got to step up their res killing. They cannot allow this tech explosion that's been taking place for the last three minutes to continue if they have any hopes of bringing this on. The other benefit for the aliens is that both Golden and Sicknick are going to be able to re-lurk in two P-res. So they're not in a horrible spot, but again, they've got to be able to capitalize on the fact that these fades are out and doing damage. But now shotguns in the hand of Lepa and Tane here in Y-Junction. 
So the thing is, is they may think about this now. If they want to either uh, one lurk uh, just for chip damage or have another one become a fade and get that extra mobility out of the field, extra damage and mobility out on the field, um, considering that we're getting into mid game now. Um, so kind of, I guess what Blind mentioned in the last game, um, having that one lurk is great. Three fades out on the field now might help them out turn some of these battles. We got Unseen and Nate moving into Pipeline where Titus loses their, their main harvester and these guys are in here shooting up the joint. Yeah, not just that, there's pressure in cargo, but Unseen and Nate taking out the crag to heal at the Hive. They are doing everything they can to eliminate any infrastructure for Titus Gaming. Here comes Locklear around the corner up against these two guys, taking a couple swipes, landing them. Great job, kill on Nate. Phasegate goes down in system waypointing. Golden now taking out the power, and infestation now being spread down to subsector as well. Versal's starting to decide to be very aggressive here, which I like. And you know, the, I think you're right. One lurk is what they need to do. You've got Sicknick who's relurked, Golden holding out. Do you think he's potentially holding out so that he can double Onos with Gorgeous? It'll uh, take a while. Maybe. Yeah, it would take a while. I mean, Gorgeous uh, definitely is going to be their Ono saver right now if they can, if they can hand you know if they can hold on to their res right now. That's the biggest thing. They're they're down on two extractors, one being grown. The entire game they've kind of been low and haven't been able to kind of break. Uh, break that extractor point where um, they're going to be able to get these life forms out more quickly. 12 minutes, 40 seconds into this match, and Gorgeous is only at 38 res. Sonoman all moving in, a four-man pressure team into waypointing oh, they really want to rebuild the game. power. <laughs> the problem is, is if that scene, that really opens them up back home. They can, you know, beacon back, but they don't have the phase gate up yet. They're now building it. You've got Titus converging on them. But with three, you know, three LNGs and that shotgun, it's a pretty difficult yeah. room to You don't engage. want to blink into that. <laughs> that's, that's a lot of damage. <laughs> yeah. Get the res on the back end of this, which is what they're going to do. They're going to move over to Topo. There was some pressure in Skylights as well. And that's the right call. So we're seeing now with that phase gate position here in system waypointing, robotics factory going up, going to be turned into um, uh, an arc factory, I'm sure. Uh, this is great job. Great positioning here when you have it in system waypointing. You can hit so many places. You can hit nano. You can hold cargo. Sub, uh, you know, reinforce subsector. Uh, system waypointing is is a great position for a gate. I agree that it is a great position, but at the same time, I kind of feel like teams will overcommit to this mm -hmm. area. And look at the pressure that Sonaman had been putting on the right side of the map to all the natural expansions for the RTs, for the aliens. And now you're not seeing that pressure. And now they're looking at five harvesters up against you know three extractors. Yeah, the arcs are coming out. They're going to do great damage to Nano and, and possibly take that for them. But I think that they need to keep the pressure going. Sonoman has the weapons. I mean, these guys, as we've said over and over again, great marine gunfire. They need to get out in pressure. They can't hold back here. We'll see Gorgeous and Sicknick working on the Overlook RT. Tane coming around the corner, trying to get uh, a couple kills with his shotgun and they just they just all get away from there. Golden going into main base up in control, sitting on the arms lab. Nate coming back through the phase gate. He took 25% damage off the arms lab. I'm sure that will get healed up. But again, you're pulling people back, giving more time for those resource nodes mm -hmm. to get attacked. So at this point, Sonoman's play right now, I mean, it looks like he's, uh, I mean, you, you can see arcs already being pumped out in system waypointing. Nice job there by Titus. If you guys are seeing, uh, Sonoman is down to three extractors. So, you know, when you're going to do an arc play, you're going to want the economy to back, uh, to back it up. So right now with what Titus is doing, taking down their RTs, they are now on six extractors. They could turn this around. Pretty quickly, you see Locklear and Rantology still as your fades. Uh, Gorgeous at 49, Golden at 39, so it looks like Golden can refade there, or what you said, double Onos. I'm seeing something here that I, I, I kind of like. You can see that Versal's placed a, a shade inside Nanogrid, and he's got a hive building down in cargo. Mm -hmm. The hive's gonna take you know another couple minutes to build without the assistance of the Gorge. Do you think he'd be tricky enough to go for a shade hive? Maybe. We may actually see that come out. Um, that would be quite interesting to actually see, other than Crag show up next. I mean, the ink does not stop the arcs from being able to do the damage, the but it definitely slows it down and yeah. saves you potentially two harvesters, right? Yep, exactly. Tane, Lipa, Unseen, and Nate here. They got one arc 
arcing already into Nano. We see that these guys are just going to be um, holding, uh, holding on to the defense of these arcs. And we're going to note here as well, Gorgeous at the 55 P-Res mark. And with six Harvesters, that's one P-Res per tick, is it not? I think so, yeah. The whip trying to move in and go up against here with this PvE. And look at this. Look at all oh, these times there. He's dying. Oh, man. It is so crazy to see Fades going in and having, like, no energy and black barring. <laughs> but getting out of there. And these guys are definitely trying to defend the Robo as well as the gate. The Arcs doing their job taking down the first Harvester, as well as cleaning up the Crag, the Gorge Tunnel, and the Shade in that room. And now they're going to be able to move into the room and secure it for themselves. Yeah. The catch, of course, Gorgeous at 58, Golden at 48. Both Fades still alive. Weapons 3, Armor 1. Oh, look up top in control. We got Locklear, Rentology, Golden, and a Drifter. Tane comes through. They take him down. Then they're moving back on the Phase Gate. Here comes the there beacon. Goes they're the gonna, beacon. They're committing for the arms lab. They're going to try to get the arms lab down. Oh, my God. Five percent. Oh, look at that save. <laughs> look at that save by Sonovan. Wow. One bite. <laughs> what a win for Sonovan in that engagement. You know, Titus pulling them back. And, you know, great call for them to do what they needed to do in that situation. <laughs> you know, try to phase through and then force the beacon. And those guys just clean it up at the right time. Now they're going to come here into Nano Grid and build, build, build. And I love that they're using a Mac now, too. Yeah. Let the Mac focus on building your stuff for you. Let that amazing Sonoman Marine pressure get out and do some damage. And Titus has got to be careful here because the momentum is starting to swing. Yeah, we got Locklear up here. Going to take a couple swipes. He's at half health. Swipes once and gets out of there. Sonoman has secured the center of the map. Nano Grid. So really good help from those arcs from system waypointing. We're seeing a lot of cleanup happening here. Uh, armor being repaired by that Mac. Um, and these guys are definitely going to keep moving along the map. We see here that hive down in cargo has just been scanned down by Sonoman. They do know it's there, and they do know there's, pro there's not a lot of buildings around it. Yeah, but what we also see is that Versal is starting to research biomass oh my and God. spores. But over in the dome, We've got the Onos. Sonoman now moving into Y Junction with those arcs, and they're going to try to take out Cargo, it looks like, as they're putting a phase gate down here in Y Junction. Yep. And there they go. They know that that hive just got built a little bit ago. Uh, that Onos is out on the field. Uh, scanned down by Gorgeous we, uh, by the commander there, and they're moving into Nano. They're going to try to take that back while these arcs are moving into Cargo. A lot of oh, oh my no! god, and they take down! They take them down! They actually take them down! Wow, and we right apologize. We were just, just clicking as I that was, was just happening. Clicking there. And wow. I, I can almost assume that with cat packs and some shotguns, <laughs> that that Onos was in big trouble. But here's the benefit for Titus, at least, is that Golden is at 58 res. But I'm sure they were banking on having two Onos. Yes. <coughs> Yes, exactly. They're banking on two Oni to come out. Uh, Golden at 59. We do see now that uh, the attack on Cargo Hive has started. Those arcs are oh, firing. Back in main start. You've got three whips now sitting down Going here. Against the doing the damage lab. to the arms lab as well as hitting these Marines, pulling everybody back, which means the Y gate is open and exposed. And there they the go. arcs are. They take down that gate. The arcs are right here still. Well, luckily, you got to get out of there. They save the gate. Oh, they do. What a great play, though, with the whips. That was a good distraction play by Titus. It didn't look like they were able to capitalize on that um, as quickly as they should have. Golden in the egg. He has popped out. He is an Onos. Here we go. We got a fade, a, two fades, and a lurk. And Golden is actually moving around, so it looks like they're going to try to attack from another way. That hive has, was taken out here in cargo. I think they realize they've got to get the res down. All the arcs are making their way out of cargo, heading back over towards C12. And in comes the Onos, one skulk, a lurk, every kind of life form around, trying to do as much damage as they can. They just got to make sure that this Onos doesn't get pinched. And Sonoman is really good at making sure that they get yep. the flanks on their life forms. Golden now coming in. Half health as he moves towards system waypointing. 
Oh, and here we go. There's the pinch. Tane trying to get some damage. He's doing great damage on Golden. Golden! Oh, no. Golden! Oh, my God. Lockley Lockley back himself. there, and Golden is on, like, no health. He's black barred. Wow. And in that fight, we're following the Onos, who almost died, but they lose Locklear as well. Oh, wow. What a blow to Titus. Losing an Onos and a, and a Fade. But Locklear, because of so much res on the alien side for, you know, a good chunk of minutes there, they have enough to refade. The problem is, like we said, it's shifting in Sonovan's favor. They're grabbing more RTs on the map. Mm -hmm. They've got more armor now, so it's really, really difficult for these fades to put enough damage on the Marines before they have to retreat. They're heavily relying on that Lurk. But Golden, man, getting Black Bart on that engagement, that's a difficult one. Like we said, you've got to watch for that pinch. And the thing is, it's an uphill battle for Titus. I mean, look, like you were saying, look how much res uh, that Sonoman has. Look at the P res that Sonoman has. It's amazing. 51, 31, 65, 20, 62. I mean, they can rebuy weapons all day. Absolutely. Power goes out in Nano. Llama and Lipa doing their job here unseen. Every Sonoman seems like he's got shotguns and probably a couple hiding <laughs> in secret holsters under the jacket as well. They've got so much money and they're going to get the power right back on on Nano. Nate. Looks like he's hiding here in C12, trying to get... Nate being sneaky. <laughs> you know what I love here too, Red Dog, is that Sonoman has taken the opportunity to put themselves in a redundant situation. They've got the commander's chair down in cargo, even in OBS and Max all over this map. Catbacks were dropped to chase Golden that time, but they got held up by a couple of... Uh, of Titus aliens there in the dome. Nate, Lipa, Llama, Tane, and Unseen. All of them here. Power, phase gate down in the dome. Let's bring up the big map right here. This is where they're setting it up. This is the main hive. They're trying to do everything they can to cut Titus off from everything. And they're doing a fantastic job. What do you think Titus can do in this situation, being on two RTs? You've got a couple fades and everything. I mean, what is your play? I think their only play right now is unconventional play. They can't play this like a normal game right now. They gotta work on pack play against um, against the base, um, take down some structures like they were going against that arms lab. They're able to take down that arms lab, oh, no, and then these Marines lose all the. Oh no, oh, man! Oh, Locklear goes down to unseen shotgun there in the neck. Amazing shot. Yeah, and, and the, now you can just see, they're cut off. They're at one RT. Uh -huh. The infestation is barely past the dome. The phase gates are putting them in a great position to be able to pinch and route block very effectively. And now here comes Unseen and Llama. You know they're going to be using cat packs. Oh, no. They've got to finish the game. Oh, no. Oh. Golden goes down as oh. well. There they go. They take it. Signet goes down, Golden goes oh, down, Rantology the only fade, and it's like we're watching Trev all <laughs> over again. <laughs> Amazing play. Here comes Sonoman in the main hive. Rantology is running for her life right now against all these Marines. Great that use oh. of a bone wall. Med packs coming down, though, to save those guys. And again, armor two and weapons three. You just feel like you're fighting and swiping forever, and just not enough damage. Nice. Nice bone wall catch there by Versal, and these guys are respawning, trying unseen just dies there, and Gorgeous. finally a clean up. Gorgeous up north, they have a they have a tunnel and skylights. This is the you know this is what I'm saying. Life is gonna run right into it. <laughs> that is absolutely unconventional play. Yeah, you gotta go unconventional play when the map's like this. There's nothing really you can do at this point. I mean, you can try to push, but they've you're out teched like crazy right now so you gotta rely on pack play and uh and base rushes really to try to win this as aliens well and i think it comes back to the fact that he's got these max on sonoman right you know hopsu is very smart using those max and allowing his marines to do what they do best kill life forms and it has paid off tenfold for mm -hmm. these guys as they're sitting on seven extractors now eight and the aliens are pretty much helpless to do anything at this point. Yeah, they got defense all over the place. You see Llama shotgunning down Locklear here in topographical. You see that they've taken cargo. Uh, we do have Gorgeous here in subsector. 
Um, looks like he's waiting to do something uh, with his team. We also got Signic flying away here from Nate and Unseen. Things aren't looking good for Titus Gaming right now. No, indeed. And here comes the rush. Let's see if we can hear a little bit from Sonaman. And that was a little bit from Sonaman as they're trying to go for this rush. Unseen and Nate Locklear now taking the, both of them down outside in utility. We got a gorge tunnel here in subsector where there's a high of 30% grown in subsector. <laughs> I mean, they definitely don't want to give this up, and I don't see a Marine anywhere nearby. They're still trying to fight Rez. They don't have the, one the arc. Robo anymore. One Arc coming. One Arc rolling over with John three shotgunners. Here. John of Arc is making a reappearance. He subs for another team this time. <laughs> He's coming through here in utility, up against his wall. There goes the scan, whips against the doorway. And they're going to try to get this down. I don't know if they've actually scanned down uh, the other hive that's in subsector right now. 80% grown on that. I mean, not, this is great and all, but they're on nine extractors. They've got the entire map, but the aliens natural uh, starting Perez. <laughs> and they're just holding their position here. I mean, really, honestly, they could just push in. Now subsector's finished. It's going to give another egg spawn spot. <laughs> That indeed, and maybe that's what they do is they go for the rush through that and not the tunnel. These guys should see the tunnels open, so they know that there's an exit somewhere. They choose to kill the tunnel instead of using it to go through and find out where they are. And it looks like so this we're going to head up north. Yeah, this hive's going to go down. Great job there. And here we go back in the base. Rantology trying to do a little bit of moves here. There's the beacon. Phase gates are out. That phase gate going straight to Y Junction to get them back out on the map. They're going to rearm, reload, um, and head back out there. Weapon, or I'm sorry, armor three. Look, two cat packs down there for Nate as he runs through with Llama. And here they go. Lipotane, unseen, everybody in here. It's a party here in Subsector. <laughs> Party indeed is Tane and Unseen and Lipa do the damage with the shotgun dance all around this hive. Those skulks are going down like candy to a child, and these guys can't do anything to stop it. I mean, Sonaman, talk about marine pressure. Yeah, hives at 60%. You guys have seen from Lipa's point of view, they're trying to get Rantology out of there. Rantology doing her best um, in terms of, of blinking all over the place, hiding on the rooftop there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's just, just not a lot they can do to stop these uh, Sonaman guys. They're pretty low on health. There we go. But down goes the high Good GG game. from the players. And holy crap, Red Dog. What a great, great, great matchup. Um, what a great game. Sonaman, we saw there, guys. Good game uh, to both teams, but Sonaman taking that uh, here on Veil. Vale. Uh, on uh, game three, so we're moving now uh, into uh, game four.